key idea. If you're changing your speed, changing your velocity, you're accelerating. We call slowing down, usually we mean a negative acceleration, speeding up, we usually mean a positive acceleration, but it's gonna get confusing because what if you're going backwards and you're slowing down? I tend to avoid the words slowing down or speeding up until I figure out a better handle on what's going on. We were doing some questions with charts. We talked about free fall. We said you can also accelerate down. We said it turns out, Jessica, if I ignore air resistance, I wanted a bit of a rant about why we're going to, because air resistance, Alex, is a very yucky, it, the mathematics of air resistance is tough. If you ignore air resistance, you tend to be accelerating down at negative 9.8 meters per second squared. We started out saying it was negative 10, but I said if I really want to be fussy at negative 9.8, you're going to need a calculator. But I kid you not, I actually calculate accelerations when I'm standing in line at amusement park rides, because why wouldn't you? And I use the negative 10 in my head, and you can figure out how fast you're going to hit the ground and stuff like that. It's kind of nearly cool, I think. And we talked about air resistance. So what you want to do is find where it says describing acceleration. Pause here is where we left off. Describing acceleration. Everybody got it? Yeah? Because like, that's why I had it up there. You're supposed to be looking for this a little earlier. If you don't find it, let me know. I printed extra copies, but I'm going to start. Okay, Matt? So we've already examined uniform motion. Uh, uniform motion, by the way, no acceleration. Boring, but we start there. So, an object traveling in uniform motion has equal displacements and equal time intervals. That's, I yoinked that right from the textbook. I would never have phrased it this way. That's the fancy way of saying you're not speeding up or slowing down. What's it saying, Courtney? It's saying you're traveling the same distance every second or every two seconds or every 10, whatever you decide to measure because you're not speeding up or slowing down, you're always gonna have the same displacement. Why did they say displacement and not distance? Because direction also matters. They're being fussy here. They're being fussy here. Pause for a second. And then I wrote here, not all objects exhibit uniform motion. In fact, I'm going to be honest, Ron, I, I, uniform motion is boring. You're going in a straight line and a steady speed. You know what uniform motion is? Walking. I'd rather be changing acceleration, speeding up, slowing down. To me, that's much more interesting. It's important to be able to analyze situations where uh, the motion is not uniform. An object traveling with the fancy word for not uniform is non-uniform motion. Well, if an object in uniform motion will have equal displacements in equal times, Non-uniform will have different displacements during equal time intervals. Alex, if you're speeding up in the first second, maybe you travel five meters, but in the second second, still one second, now you travel seven meters. And in the third second, maybe you travel nine meters. You're speeding up. Or it might take different times to travel equal displacements. For example, if you're slowing down, maybe before you hit the brakes, it to took you two seconds to travel 15 meters. Then you start slowing down. Now it takes you two sec four seconds to travel the next 50 meters. Still slowing down. Now it takes you six seconds to travel the next 50 meters. 
equal displacement, different time. Again, I would never phrase it this way. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, Courtney, tell you how I know it's non-uniform motion in a much simpler definition. Right here. <coughs> this is what I look for. What does uh, V stand for? How do you know that's not speed? Okay, I put a little vector thing. Although, argue, if you're changing your speed, you are changing your velocity because something's changing. You want the really, really simple version? You're speeding up, you're slowing down, or changing direction, but we're not gonna be that fussy this year. We will be in physics 12. You're accelerating. You're accelerating. Okay. Here's the definition that I would give you if we were in physics 11. I would say acceleration is the rate of change in velocity. It's the rate of change in velocity. It's how fast your velocity is changing. Did you find it, Matt? Have you found where we are, though? Yes? Yeah. Okay. Was I right? Cra crazy eight? I, mean, I, I knew my audience. Yeah. Okay. And here's how you can calculate it. What would be a good letter to use for uh, acceleration? Okay. We're going to use an A. Okay? And that's one I think is pretty universal. I want to emphasize that it's a vector. Direction does matter. So I'm almost always going to put a little vector sign above that one. Okay. I wrote it's the rate of change in velocity. What's my symbol for change in? Delta. Delta. Velocity. Now, right now, that's what I've written is wrong, because Jessica, right now, that says, oh, acceleration is change in velocity. It's the rate of change in velocity. In physics, any time we talk about the rate, what we're really saying is divide by the change in time. Now, if you're reading that to me, Sage, you can either read delta V over delta T, I'll know what you mean, or you can say change in velocity over change in time. Is that on your purple formula sheet somewhere? Exactly like that? I hate that version. Uh, if you ever have me or Mr. Camozzi for Physics 11 next year, we'll give you this, but we'll give you a much better one. And the much better one comes from this idea that anytime you see a ch that, which means change in, that always means what minus what? Who remembers what change in really means? Yep. This is the equation that I always jump to. V final minus V initial over time. So write that down, and then I'll show you, Tyra, how it comes from the left one, the one that you get on your fancy schmancy formula sheet, the one that you're allowed to have on the provincial, so I'll give you the same stuff, okay? First of all, what did I say change in anything is? Final minus initial. Now, if you look on the formula sheet, though, where is my formula sheet, Mr. Duick? Science 10. If you look on the formula sheet, they do have a little right here, delta V equals VF minus VI. So do you have to memorize that? No. You probably will, Courtney, because you're going to get tired of looking it up. 
This is why, by the way, if you ever have your physics, you'll hear me say time and time again, don't memorize this, don't memorize this. Oh, you know what? This one you're gonna be looking up 80 times. It's worth committing to memory, although you probably will, Jasmine, just because you get sick and tired of looking it up. Okay, so there's that. That's where this part comes from. And then time is always a change in. I got to be honest, Julie, because it's always a change in, we get sloppy and we just drop the delta because it's less intimidating. And the reason is on your stopwatch, you're starting it and you're stopping it. It's actually already doing the math for you. It's giving you the change in because it's starting at zero and giving you the final. Okay. So this is the one that's on your sheet uh, right there. But notice right next to it, it does tell you what delta V is, final minus initial. Okay. Now, I know there's another delta V right down there. Don't let that freak you out. We'll talk about what that one means. Instead, read across to fill in the blanks. Who remembers what the units were for acceleration? I gave it to you guys Friday. Yep. Meters per second is velocity. Kilometers per hour is velocity. Okay, oh. um, it's tech. Don't write this down. It's technically meters per second per second, but three level fractions are stupid. Since there's two S's on the bottom, we say, you know what? There, that's yeah, it's meters per second squared. It's meters per second per second is kind of how I think about it, but meters per second squared. In other words, if you see a meters per second squared, that's an acceleration. There are other units, less common, mostly stupider units. There's one that the curriculum textbook likes to use in physics 11, which I hate, just kilometers per hour per second. Anyways. Uh, well, their argument is if you're in a car, your speedometer says kilometers per hour, but your stopwatch gives it to you in seconds. So if you're trying to find the acceleration of a car, I understand why they do that, but yeah, meh. This Excel stop. I don't want to write the word acceleration. Hey, do we have a handy dandy letter that's an abbreviation for acceleration? What? Now, if I just write this, you might actually think that's the word a. Uh. There. There th that way I know I'm talking about acceleration and not the letter a or the word a. Uh. So this acceleration, can I do that from now on? And you can feel free to do that. Can be due to a, uh, now I know I wrote triangle speed, but how would you read that out? Change in speed? Uh, change in direction or both? And your bodies can detect it. Your bodies have built-in accelerometers. You can feel it. The only problem is your bodies feel it wrong, backwards. Your bodies have a built-in accelerometer, but they always feel it in the wrong direction. Let me convince you of that. How many of you have ever been in a car at a red light when somebody gave it gas really fast? Okay. Which way are you clearly accelerating? Forwards. Which way does it feel like you're getting pushed? Backwards into the seat. How many of you have been on the elevator before? Okay. When it launches you, which way are you clearly accelerating at the beginning? Up. Which way does your stomach feel like it's moving? Okay, down. At the top, when it pushes you down, which way are you clearly accelerating? Down. Which way do you feel like you're about to fly though? Up, okay, your body can feel it, but it's always back. It's always backwards. Your body will feel acceleration. So if you're ever doing a question and you're trying to figure out what direction, if you can imagine being on that thing, or if you've been in it, ask which way do I feel like I'm getting pushed? The opposite direction. Oh, when you hit the brakes, which way do you feel like your body is getting pushed forward? Which way are you accelerating? Backwards. Backwards. You are. Ah. 
How many of you have been on the Music Express ride at Playland? That's the one that goes really, really fast. And do you want me to go faster? Yeah. Okay, th that ride. Yeah. Okay, which way do you feel like you're getting pushed on that ride? To the outside. Which way are you accelerating? Inwards. If you're moving in a circle, you're accelerating inwards. If you're going around a corner, you're actually accelerating inwards, even though you feel like you're accelerating outwards. That'll always work, by the way, for your body. Your bodies are accelerometers. They can feel it, but they're backwards every time. I, I, if you're not sure, trust me. So if you're ever in a situation, which way am I accelerating? Which way do you feel like you're getting pushed? Uh, up, you're accelerating down. Trust me. Trust me. Okay? I didn't, we didn't write that down. It's not in the physics book, but for what it's worth, since you have that as part of your anatomy, your built-in accelerometers, may as well use it. Next page. Two objects with the same change in velocity can have different accelerations because acceleration describes the amount of time the oh, change in velocity occurs. So here's a little picture. We have a little tiny jalopy old car and a dragster. Both of them are going to have a race to see who can reach 100 kilometers per hour first. What's the change in velocity for each vehicle? Well, in any race, what's your initial velocity always? Zero. According to this question, what's the final velocity going to be of each of these? So if change in velocity is always final minus initial, in your head, please, can you go 100 minus? You can write that down if you want to. But if, if, if in your homework, if you can do it in your head, great. But so that you're studying, so that when you're studying, you know what the heck we did. We did go final minus initial. Uh, the change in velocity for both is 100 kilometers per hour. Now, you ready? I, because I said velocity, I need a direction. So I'm going to do this. I'm going to say east is this way, and that way I can go east. Otherwise, it's a speed. And I'm a physics nerd, so I should be fussy. So what's the change in velocity for each vehicle? The same. Um, will they have the same acceleration? No. no. Why? Because one's going to have a much bigger time. That's why acceleration, it's defined, Julie, as the change in velocity over uh, the change in time, the rate of change of velocity. So what's the change in velocity? Does this mean they have the same acceleration? No. Delta T is different, right? In fact, from what you know of physics, which one will have a higher acceleration? The dragster, okay? Now, we're gonna write this down later, but I'll introduce it to you now. Who remembers from Friday what the acceleration due to gravity is? I gave it to you as a number. It was really close to 10, but not quite. Okay, 9.8. We call that 1G. So when they talk about G forces, G forces is actually wrong. They should say G accelerations, but I'm not going to change. The, the, they call it G forces. 1G, you're having acceleration of 9.8. Two Gs, your acceleration is 19.6. Three Gs, it's three times 9.8. A uh, dragster, you get about three and a half or four Gs. Okay. Uh, gives you an idea of what's really big and really small. Uh, biggest ride at Playland hits barely, it does hit though, uh, four Gs. And it's not the ride that you think, and I'm not going to tell you what it is, but if you take Physics 12, we do go on a field trip to Playland, and that's one of the questions that kids have to figure out. We go on the rides with accelerometers, we measure the G forces, and anyways. How's that for a good recruiting little Playland? Really? Yeah. Okay. Uh, astronauts on the space shuttle 
pull about four and a half to five G's. Fighter pilots pull about eight G's at their maximum. If you're bored sometime, go into YouTube and see if you can find a GoCam camera of either a stunt pilot doing aerobatics or a fighter pilot. If you look, they are working their tails off to not pass out inside the particular airplane. Okay. Little chart here. Uh, you know what? At the top, let's write, make a little note. Uh, acceleration is change in velocity over change in time. When would the acceleration be zero? There's two situations. What? Okay, so the first one, Taylor got the first one, I'm impressed. Situation number one is, fancy word is at rest, not moving. And there's another situation. How else can you be moving and not accelerating? Okay, steady pace, I'm gonna use the physics word, constant speed. Okay. So you're not accelerating if you're at rest, or if you're going in a straight line on a steady speed. Uh, can you give me a real world example of uh, at rest? You know what, I'm gonna use what you guys are doing right now. Standing still, yeah, sure. Can you give me a real world example? Uh, I gotta be careful. Walking, not necessarily. Can you be more specific? Sure, because you can stroll, slow down, speed up, right? Especially if you're sightseeing or something like that. Every time when you see something interesting, you naturally slow down, so I gotta be fussy. Acceleration would be positive if your speed is increasing. And then there's an obscure one. Okay? So your acceleration is positive if your speed is changing in the forwards direction. Let's suppose you're in reverse and you're already going fast in reverse, but you hit the brakes. If you're going backwards and you slow down, what direction is your acceleration? And the answer is forwards. And you know how I can convince you? Your body has a built-in accelerometer, but which way does it work? Back, okay. So imagine if you're in reverse really fast and your friend hits the brakes which way would you feel like you're getting pushed? Into the back seat still, in, into your back. Which way are you accelerating then? Okay, so here's the obscure one. I'm gonna write going backwards and slowing down. <laughs> Hitting the brakes while going backwards already. We're gonna prove it mathematically, and these are tricky to wrap your brain around. The toughest part with acceleration is trying to figure out, uh, are you positive or negative? Mathematically, I can get it every time. Stuff like this, honestly, I fall back to mathematically. Uh, pressing the gas pedal of a car while in drive, not while in reverse. Acceleration could be negative if speeding up while in Reverse. 
Now, ready? I've told you, your bodies can feel acceleration, but they feel it backwards. So I'd like you to imagine you're in reverse going slowly. What would happen if somebody floored it? Your body would jerk forwards. Why? Because you're accelerating backwards. Okay, can you imagine that? I'm assuming you've been in a car enough to have some of these experiences. Uh, or, or another great one, by the way, bumper cars on, at play, like great examples of positive and negative accelerations. You can think about that too. Because bumper cars also go in reverse, right? The easiest one is slowing down while traveling forwards. And the third one that we're going to look at an awful lot because it's cool, free fall because we've defined down as negative. Okay. Let's go like this. <coughs> Excuse me. Real world examples. So free fall is one already, but in reverse, hit the gas pedal. How do I know? I drive. And I've hit the gas pedal while in reverse. And when I do that, my body lurches forwards, which means I'm accelerating backwards. Or while moving forwards, hit brakes. How do I know? Because all of you have been in a car when they've hit the brakes, and which way does your body move? Forwards, which way are you accelerating? Backwards. Okay. Free fall. Have I mentioned lately I jumped out of an airplane? Are you going to say that an awful lot? Maybe. No, you've jumped out of a plane, so. Next page. Positive and negative changes in velocity. Ty, again, I'll be honest, I find this the toughest. I'm much better at just doing the math. And then if my answer is positive, hey, that's a positive acceleration. And if my answer is negative, hey, that's a negative acceleration, which is why, Tyra, I'm trying to give you the physical hook of your body can feel acceleration. Just remember, it's always backwards. Ty's heard this speech both in physics 11 and physics 12. <laughs> Give me five minutes. Nope, okay, hustle back. What does that say? Okay, I was gonna put that in the brackets and actually write out in English change in velocity, but are you okay? Can we use the abbreviations? I'll just put the abbreviation there. Occurs when the speed of an object changes or its direction changes. And if this seems repetitive, this is a tough concept. I'm going to be repeating myself a bit, Alex. I am. I'm a physics nerd. I've wrapped my brain around this. But I will say, like at Science Pro D's, this is often what I'm helping other science teachers in other schools figure out this year, this notion of what's positive acceleration and what's negative acceleration. It's not their fault. The textbook does a terrible job. A change in velocity can be calculated by What's changing anything? Now, you don't have to memorize that. It is on your formula sheet, but that's a nice one to have in your back pocket so that you're not having to look it up. And hopefully, Matt, you've also just clued in in physics. We use subscripts as abbreviations. So I for initial, F for final. Those are two of the more common ones. This is how the textbook wants me to explain this, this next paragraph. I hate this next paragraph. In fact, I've already decided I may nuke this next time I teach Science 10. But this is going to seem confusing. Don't freak out. I have pictures that will make it clearer. If the change in velocity, what do I want to go with, is the same sign, the same plus or minus, positive or negative, 
as the initial velocity speed is increasing. Huh? Patience. <laughs> oh, and the flip side of that, Tyra, is if the change in velocity, velo velocity, velocity is the opposite sign. In other words, if, uh, 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 oh, as the initial velocity speed is decreasing. I'm not a big fan of the way they phrased that, Jessica, but I'm teaching the curriculum. Oh, I should point out if the change in velocity is zero, the object has a constant velocity or is at rest. Alex, we call that For some reason, I want to emphasize this. I don't know why. An object can be at rest and have uniform motion. All right. So you ready? Let's look at what I wrote in red. Let's suppose, instead of using positive or negative, I'm going to use the word forwards. Okay. If your initial velocity is forwards and your acceleration is forwards, you're speeding up. That's all that red line is saying. Are you ready? If your initial velocity is backwards, if you're in your reverse, but your acceleration is forwards, you're slowing down. You're hitting the brakes or something. That's what that red is saying. Or. If your initial velocity is backwards, if you're in reverse and your acceleration is backwards, you're speeding up going backwards. Your speedometer would be getting bigger, but your direction is backwards. Rylan, that's what the red and that's what the blue are saying. So don't let that overcomplicate you. I think most of you can kind of intuitively figure that part out and we'll look at some pictures. Where kids struggle most initially, Matt, is uh, positive and negative accelerations, okay? So, the, what's that an abbreviation for? By the way, that's a terrible arrow. Acceleration direction is the same as the change in velocity direction. It's the same as the final minus initial. If your acceleration is opposite to the change in velocity, sorry, let me rephrase that, uh, to the direction of motion, sorry guys, to the way you're moving, We sometimes call that deceleration. I'm rarely going to use that word. I'll talk about slowing down or speeding up. D cell or uh, you know what? I think it's one L. Deceleration. <laughs> I hate that word. I like this better because uh, that puts a number on it. Let's look at pictures. Yep. Yep. Hustle back. So a couple pictures and we're done. 
Then Wednesday, I'm actually going to do this, I think, better, Jasmine. I'm going to do this mathematically, which equations are going to seem, with equations. They're going to seem scary at first, but if you practice them, Ty, they're far clearer than this mumbo jumbo, but the textbook wants me to cover that. Okay. So, car is speeding up in the forward direction. There's our picture. Uh, let's decide forwards is positive. What would backwards be then? Negative. Okay. Is your speed increasing or decreasing? Looking at this picture. Will the final velocity be bigger or smaller than the initial velocity? So here's what we're going to say. That means this is positive. The change in velocity, Ty, positive or negative? Positive. The acceleration, positive or negative? Positive. So we're going to say the acceleration is positive. It's the same direction as the change in velocity. I don't know why I put it there. Oh, I know why, because I was writing out the word positive, and I've just decided instead to put a plus and a minus. This is hitting the brakes. You ready? When you hit the brakes, which way are you traveling, forwards or backwards? Which way are you traveling? Which way is the car moving? Look at the picture. Forwards. So which direction is its velocity? Forwards. Which way are you accelerating, Joseph, forwards or backwards? Okay, so the mumbo jumbo here is we're going to call this a negative acceleration. Let's walk through the proof. If we designate forwards as positive, okay, is your final velocity bigger or smaller than your initial velocity looking at this picture? Are you speeding, down, speeding up or slowing down? Slowing down. So we're going to say is negative. The acceleration is negative. Now, look up. I'm going to cover up all the mumbo jumbo textbook writing that it wants me to do. Um, and I'm just going to do this intuitively. Jessica, have I mentioned that your body has a built-in accelerometer, but it's backwards? Okay. In a car, you've been in a car? Have you been in a car looking at this picture that's approaching a red light and slowing down? Have you been in that situation? Which way is the car traveling, forwards or backwards? So its initial velocity is positive. Which way are you accelerating? Which way do you feel like you're getting pushed? Forwards. Which way are you accelerating? So here's what we said. Your initial velocity is forwards. The acceleration is in the opposite direction. We'll call that negative. Let me scroll back. Here's what I said. If the change in velocity, the acceleration, is the same direction as the initial, positive, speeding up. Like uh, here. If the change in velocity is in the opposite direction of the initial, negative. Call it slowing down. Now let's go backwards. Okay. A car speeding up in the backward direction. I hate this phrasing. First of all, how fast was the car going initially? Here's VI. How fast is the car going initially? What's the negative saying? Backwards. One meter per second backwards or negative one meter per second. How fast is it going later on? Okay. 
So here's the problem. This is why it's kind of confusing. Yes, it's sped up. On the number line, what's bigger, negative 1 or negative 4? Technically, negative 1. This is where it gets confusing. So I'm not a big fan, Alex, of the way they phrase it. Here's what I'm going to say. Look at the picture. Look at the picture. Did the person, what, what gear is the person in, forwards or reverse? Reverse? Did they press the gas or hit the brakes? They hit the gas. If you're in reverse and they floor it, which way do you feel like you're getting pushed? Forwards, which way is your acceleration then? Okay, so you ready? <coughs> if we designate the backwards direction as negative, then the change in V is, what's change in anything? Final, negative 4, minus initial. And this is why I said to you, I think it was Jasmine that I said this to, I find the math makes it easier. I can't wrap my brain very well around this picture, but I can go negative 4 minus minus 1, as long as I remember that change in anything is always final minus initial. By the way, what's a minus minus the same as? What's negative 4 plus 1? You know what? The change in V is negative. I don't need to try and wrap my brain around it, Tyra. I can just do it mathematically, either with a calculator or this one in my head. Okay? This means that the acceleration is even though the car is increasing its speed, yes, it's speeding up, but it's speeding up in which direction? Backwards. This is a negative acceleration. Remember, positive and negative, they refer to direction. I think I have one more. When in doubt, court me, when I don't, when I can't work out the question, I fall back on And if they didn't give me numbers, you know what? I'll make up reasonable numbers. Show you what I mean. If they didn't give me numbers here, I would say, well, maybe my initial is 5, and since I'm accelerating backwards, my final is 2. 2 minus 5, negative 3. You know what? My acceleration is negative. It's backwards. Last one. A car, this is the toughest one to wrap your brain around. A car slowing down in the backward direction. So here's what we're talking about. You're in reverse going pretty fast. And the driver taps or hammers the brakes. Which way will you get pushed? Use your imagination. You're in reverse really fast and they hit the brakes really fast. Which way does your body get pushed? Forwards or backwards? Backwards. Which way are you accelerating? forwards. Okay, that's the answer. Now let's prove it. <sighs> Here's what the textbook wants me to do. <sighs> if we designate backwards as negative, okay, I'm going to have this be V initial. I'm going to have this be V final. Can you make up a nice number for V initial? Now we're going backwards cam, so put a negative in front of it. Can you make up a nice negative V initial number? Less than 10, please. That's forwards. Can you make it go backwards, please? Are we speeding up or slowing down according to this question? So can you make up a nice negative V final that's not as fast as negative 5? Cam, what's change in anything? The change in velocity is going to be 
final minus initial. What did you, you just made up numbers. What did you say V final was in our picture? That's what you said V final was? Okay, this is the only part you can't get, you can't get mixed up. Keep going, negative three minus. By the way, Cam, what's a minus minus the same as? This is negative three plus five. Answer, either on a calculator or if you're good at integers in your head. Positive or negative? Here's the, what direction is our acceleration? Positive. Okay, there's the mathematical proof. I'm telling you, we are accelerating that way. So now, that's because the change in velocity is positive. We're accelerating forwards, even though the car is traveling backwards. Whew! I need to let this sink in a little bit. I've tried to give you a couple of ways to handle this. Joseph, if you can imagine sitting in it, think about, well, which way would I feel like I was getting pushed? Do the opposite. If you can't imagine sitting in it, make up cam reasonable numbers looking carefully at the picture. Or if they give you numbers, use the numbers. Remembering, Alex, that change in anything is always what? Final minus initial. I know you had your hand up. I'm ignoring you for a second. What's your homework? You can probably get this done in class. I did it. Did I attach the answers? I think I did. Yeah. yeah? Okay. But don't just copy. So here's some vocabulary. <sighs> I have a tough time wrapping my brain around the way they mention it. Ty, I'm good at math. Almost always I know acceleration is the change in velocity divided by time. But the sign, the positive or negative, comes from the change in velocity. I'll make up numbers and I'll just go final minus initial in my head. Positive. Oh, acceleration's positive. Final minus initial in my head. Negative. Okay, the acceleration's backwards. Negative. Okay, but see if you can fill these in. Then they're going to do some intuitive questions. Here's some car questions, space shuttle, and fill in the blanks. I did attach the answers. Again, we'll do this more intuitively, I think, next class.